Welcome back to Civilian Tactical Future Weapons Edition, because today, if you're a military-aged male, our seven-part experiment might just save your life. Why? Well, because today we're going to be testing the most highly debated and recommended methods for hiding from thermal weapon scopes. Because some people say that if you're going up against a thermal scope, you are as good as dead. While other people say that you can survive for only a couple of bucks, but only one of these groups is right. And while some of these cost money, our last two methods cost cost absolutely nothing. Now for our first test, we're going to try something you would not imagine would work, and that's going to be a plain old umbrella. And for our final test, we're going to pick something straight out of the movies, and that is going to be covering our body with mud. And of course, before our seven part test to figure out which is most effective, we need a baseline. So we're going to go stand out there and see what I look like without any cover whatsoever. And as you study this reference image, this is the DNT 635R. This is DNT's highest end thermal plus night vision device. So this is going to give us our most robust example of what good night vision looks like and if you can hide from this then we know you can hide effectively from anything so can an umbrella hide you from thermal well let's pop this thing open and find out again this is just a regular umbrella and I did as you can see I coated this with a regular coat of green spray paint so this helps a little bit with the camouflage from the visual spectrum but now let's turn it towards our thermal camera oh does that work let's take a look let's see if holding this works I'm even gonna walk towards the night vision, and then removed back in place. So those were interesting results from the umbrella. What I think is happening is as this umbrella is closed, whichever part is facing towards the sun is heating up. And as you deploy that, that's why we were seeing two panels that were consistently red hot. So yeah, it's gonna block your thermal heat signature, but if you got it hot itself, it's still going to show up. But it's a lot better than your full body, and it doesn't look like a human, it just looks like maybe a piece of foliage, a branch, or a piece of trash, or just an umbrella. The downsides is it was very visibly an umbrella, even though it was through thermal, you could tell this was a man-made object. So yeah, it would maybe stop an AI from recognizing you as a human, but a human would recognize you as a moving umbrella, and that's incredibly suspicious. So for our next test, we're going to use this. This is a smoke bomb. As you can see, it'll pump out purple smoke, and this can very easily cloud your visible signature. As you can tell, I'm really hard to see right now, but let's place this down to see if it will cloak my thermal signature. I wonder if this is going to be showing up red hot for you guys. This is really effective. I have to say, I cannot see the thermal camera, but I wonder if the thermal camera can see me regardless of all of this purple smoke. And we've now come to the end of our smoke bomb. It's time to review our result. The entire range is purple behind me. Visibly, I couldn't see the thermal camera, but it could see me through the smoke bomb no problem and as you could see on our regular camera that was quite thick smoke not only could the thermal camera see straight through the smoke but this portion where the smoke was being emitted where the ignition was happening showed up red hot which would actually be an identifier as well it would look incredibly bright incredibly suspicious so this is a terrible idea don't use a smoke bomb to cloak your thermal signature next up we got this guy right here this is a plain old rain poncho and it has a pretty interesting theory of use behind it you see our skin is hot but the poncho itself should just be room temperature. So if it holds off of your skin and isn't absorbing a ton of your body heat, it should look to be to the camera like ambient temperature. But of course, there's only one way to find out. Keep in mind, this isn't a thermal blanket and this has no heat retention properties. The idea is it's just not on your skin, so it shouldn't be as hot. Speaking of hot, I think I just found my new style choice right here. What do you think? Let's get to the thermal camera and see what it sees. All right, let's test the thermal. Something interesting about this bin, you can see it has a hot spot. That's because the backside has actually been blown out by a good shotgun blast. Now we're going to test with the poncho hood down because I have a feeling my face could be the weak point of this and see if this is any better. And the best part is this thing has the visual camo too, which should make you less conspicuous to a regular viewer without thermal. Wild results. You could see my face like a Christmas tree, but this thing actually 
actually blocked the thermal signature really well, except for on my head. And I think if you wanted to, you could get a thermal poncho and something like a beekeeper's helmet with a net out front. And that could block very effectively your heat signature so that it didn't light up like a Christmas tree. So by itself, I would say this does not work. Your head shows up, but throw on a hat with a net and this one gets a pass. One major downside to the poncho is the heat. It is like sitting inside of a greenhouse. I am taking this thing off and I am not sad about it. Now let's keep going, but first I've got a question for you. Would you leave your pistol on the hood of your car while you went into the gas station? Of course not. That is simply asking for trouble. So then why would you do the same thing with your information online? Leaving your data exposed is kind of like leaving your firearm out there. It's only a matter of time before it falls into the wrong hands. And that's where today's sponsor Aura comes in. They lock down your digital life. They check for leaked passwords, monitor who's using your credit, and even scan for viruses. And then request the removal of your data from shady data brokers. The result is protection from hacked accounts, stolen credit cards, and those creepy spam calls we all hate. So stop leaving your information vulnerable to data breaches. Go to my sponsor in the description, aura.com slash civilian tactical to get a 14 day free trial and see if any of your data has been exposed. Next up, we have something that might seem intuitive, but I have a feeling this could be a secret killer. This is a Mylar blanket or a space blanket or an emergency survival blanket. Essentially, it is a very shiny, thin plastic material with a coating that is incredibly reflective. Now, as you can see, this thing is gonna light up anything visual in the visual spectrum and people will see you from a mile away. So bad from a visual perspective, but what about thermal? Well, let's see, cause I can imagine it'll keep your heat in, but I'm also guessing it's gonna reflect all the heat around you, but there's only one way to find out. This is me without the Mylar blanket. And now let's pop this thing up. Let's just block it as if it's a massive shield. See how that works and then see how it looks when I wrap it around myself like so. It's also incredibly noisy. People would hear you from a mile away as well as seeing you. So how does that look? I can see the thermal camera now and you can actually see through the mylar so you don't even need a visible window. Though I can tell you right now underneath of this thing, I'm getting really hot. Let's move left and right and walk a little bit towards the camera inside of our mylar blanket and time to review the results. So did the Mylar blanket work? Absolutely, but it was really loud. Visually, you could see this from a mile away, but it actually insulated really well and you could see through it while moving. So a Mylar blanket in a pinch in a very specific scenario, I will give this a pass as long as nobody's looking at you with their normal eyes. But there is a hybrid between this Mylar blanket and the non-thermal poncho. And I think this might give you the best of both worlds of the regular non-heat poncho and that Mylar blanket because it's a poncho. It doesn't sound super noisy because it has this green coating on the outside, but on the inside, it has that heat reflective Mylar. So let's put on our heat retention poncho, turn on the thermal camera and hide my head. Here I am without my head covered. And now let's cover my head with our heat retention poncho and see if this gives us better results on the head area than our rain poncho did. You cannot see through this like you could with that Mylar blanket, but it is much less noisy. Not to mention visually, this thing is a little bit less conspicuous but I am sure that my legs stand out like a sore thumb, so maybe get something a bit longer. A very interesting offering, but it was incredibly hot. I think I would just stick with a regular poncho and a hat and a net because this thing heated up really, really quickly and it doesn't cover you as much as the poncho did and it's a little bit louder and sometimes on the thermal, it looked really high contrast, meaning some areas were really bright and some were dark and that was just kind of odd. So definitely a viable option and better than nothing, but I do think that the regular poncho was going to be the best bet so far. And now as I show you our last two methods, which are completely free, we're getting into a very interesting time of the day, and that's called the peak heat. Essentially, that's when the environment or the sun is heating up different items in our surroundings to my body temperature, which is going to be 93 degrees ish. This is going to be in the summer during the middle of the day, or even if the light is hitting certain surfaces and heating them up just enough. Peak heat kind of goes hand in 
in hand with thermal crossover, but thermal crossover is in the morning and in the evening. Peak heat's just gonna be during the day when your body temperature is gonna match a lot of the surroundings. So there's gonna be low contrast. For example, this tree stump is nice and hot because of the sun hitting the side. Our backdrop is going to be almost black in the thermal because, well, it's cold and it's way off in the shade. And to our visual camera, it just looks like a normal picture, but because it is hot, it's gonna show up on the thermal camera and I don't know that I'm gonna stand out a whole ton. And after reviewing the footage, it looks like our hypothesis was correct. I was pretty much the same shades as the tree stump itself. And I wasn't going red or white or anything of the sort because my body is just the same temperature. So as we get to this part of the day with our last test, I'm gonna need to make sure that I'm totally in the cool shade area because then my body heat's gonna stand out against the backdrop. And for that, we're gonna cover this arm completely in mud. So let's take our muddy mixture and just pour that over my arm. You can see we're getting a nice thick coating. This is gonna be very interesting to see under the thermal. Oh, that feels so weird. We're getting a full thick coating. If anything works, this should. The idea behind this is that the mud and the water will insulate a little bit, but also defuse that heat due to the moisture. So let's go to the thermal camera and test it out. And this is our very last test. So coming up into the bushes, we have my two arms right here on the left we have our mud arm and on the right we have my regular arm. Let's see what they look like under thermal. I wonder if there's any difference whatsoever. My hand here is a little bit wet and I don't know if that's gonna make this look cooler, but this entire arm is drenched in moist mud. It's not dry, it's kind of just gooing and dripping off. Well, for the last test, I think those were the coolest and most conclusive results. You could see that with our DNT Thermnight 335R, it was apparent that the hand I used to slather mud on this arm was cold, and so was my mud arm. But my elbow, if you look at this footage, you can see that it was whiter, meaning it would show up better, meaning water cooling works, and if you use mud, it's gonna stick around for longer, keeping you colder and dry dropping your thermal signature. It's gonna be incredibly uncomfortable, but it's gonna be incredibly effective. For my overall thoughts, least effective is gonna be a smoke bomb, and the most effective is going to be mud, or perhaps a poncho and a face net to block that bright red head heat signature. Which method would you use? And don't forget to subscribe for more.